Hello everybody and welcome to my new moon video. The reason that I'm doing this moon video is because of all these headlines that I saw all over the internet. Enormous mysterious mass under the moon's largest crater. Astronomers detect a huge unexplained mass under a giant crater. Mass anomaly detected under the moon's largest crater. Huge mysterious blob discovered under the moon's biggest crater. And a bunch of YouTube channels dived in on this too. And I think I'm not sure, but there was a lot of conjecture that it was an underground base and so on. So, so since this is the biggest crater on the moon, I thought it would be worthwhile to take a close look at it, explain what it is, how it got there and so on and I think we may even find the mass anomaly or at least a, a good reason for it and a lot of these websites here by the way do uh, present possibilities and stuff but the thing is the headline you know mass anomaly is like oh we don't know what it is but it's really not that hard to explain what it really is so before we get into the biggest crater on the moon and I think it's also the biggest crater uh, in the solar system. The South Pole Aitken, called SPA, basin. Now they're calling it a basin, so it's like the basin of the big crater, but you can't really see the edges very well uh, from this high up. So the crater itself is called the South Pole Aitken or the SPA. It doesn't really have like just the name you know like uh, Aitken Crater which is up here at the top. You can see they've got it on the map there. It's 2,500 kilometers across or 1,550 miles. It's about a quarter of the moon's circumference and it's this dark spot here and right up above the dark spot this is all high ground up here the highest part of the moon is here the impact was here the center of it is right here where the little hand is the impact was from the lower left coming from the lower left and hit this way and blew everything up over here so moving down the page lunar samples suggest that most of the major basins on the moon formed around 3.9 billion years ago in a period called the late heavy bombardment and then also was the impact that caused the SPA basin also part of some cataclysmic event that occurred 3.9 billion years ago. This impact is supposed to be from 2 to 4 billion years old. So it's pretty old. So it's, that's why it looks so beat up and you can hardly even tell it's a crater. How much ejecta would have landed on the earth? And that's for such a huge impact they would be just impossible the earth did not get you know, totally rained down with stuff. But this was billions of years ago. How long would it take for ejecta to reach the Earth? Surely this impact profoundly affected the young Earth. So I'm pretty sure that this is the anomaly right here, the mysterious anomaly. And obviously, something that huge hitting the moon billions of years ago, when it probably did have a molten core, and maybe even beyond or at least a pliable mantle uh, this could have punched a hole all the way to the core which means now the core can well up a little bit through the passageway that was just cut by this projectile that may have reached the core and if you look at the size of the crater on the moon it seems perfectly plausible or the meteor or the asteroid or it could have even been a, you know, big, way bigger than an asteroid even, was probably mostly metallic. Maybe it never made it to the core. With everything melted and, you know, moving around it, it settled in, but I think it was covered up with actual lava. So it is buried, and the anomaly that this French space agency discovered is well below the surface. And and also keep in mind that this impact was not a straight on hit. Uh, the only way they could actually hit the core is if it were a straight direct hit. Totally perpendicular to the surface but this particular one came at an angle probably a little bit more realistic but still at an angle most of the ejecta being on one side. It is at such an angle that it is possible that it it, depending on the size and the shape and the 
composition of the impactor, it might have gone all the way through the moon because it didn't really have to go through the center. And it can easily have rebounded and maybe the shape too. And it could, if it was solid iron nickel and big enough, which obviously was big enough, um, it could have just like done like a curved passing through or maybe it even blew up somewhere in the mantle as it blew out the other side or it just went to the you know into the molten uh, mantle really at that time this is four billion years ago so the, the the whole moon was basically molten and it had a very thin uh, so it could have just been absorbed by that and then melted and became part of the core but a lot of material on the impact was lost probably raining down on earth uh, and on, a lot of it was just lost out into into space. So when we check out the Google Earth Moon SPA right here, this is the, how big the basin is. Remember that's 1,500 miles across. It hit at an angle from the lower left. Here's Aiken Crater right here. There it is. I have better maps too, we'll look at those and it'll actually show the deposition up here. So here we have this moon. Now the south pole is down here. Bring it straight up, the north pole does. Well I guess it lines up pretty well. So this is the south pole. The impact was from the lower left. Came through, if it went through, and it was at an angle, it wasn't going towards the core. So if it did go through, I'm saying it came out this side of the moon. Just basically, it doesn't necessarily have to have blown all this into outer space, but a lot of this material probably did uh, never return. But keep in mind, the core was very thin, so any kind of an explosion inside could have just done this kind of a disruption. This is all volcanic material, I believe. And the thing about it is it's, it's very smooth. It doesn't even look like it was really, a, you know, these are big impacts here. It's just too smooth. Back that up just a little bit. You can see that if it hit here at this angle, so I'm just moving it straight across, the only place it really can come out is here. Now I realize these are probably more craters, but this is a very strange shape here, and this is all volcanic, so uh, a lot of the debris from this impact ended up right through here. It was thrown like halfway across the moon. So if anything went through, it went through here or caused a disturbance here and did this, or it just came right out the other side, just like a missile or something. Um, as far as the anomaly goes, we'll check that out in some further uh, illustrations here. This is what the moon is uh, presumed to be uh, today. You can see the core is very, very tiny. It says the outer core is liquid still, but that's questionable. Um, for it to have an outer core, of course it is pretty small. Uh, that would indicate it could possibly have some kind of a magnetic field, uh, like a geomagnetic field. Um, but I don't know. That core looks pretty small. I don't. I don't know if that's all that true. But this is basically, you know, kind of right. So most of these planetary bodies have uh, cores for sure. Hot, at least red hot cores. They're not all molten. In order to have a geomagnetic field you have to have a molten core that's dynamic and moving and you can see here that earth has a a pretty big liquid outer core which is a very dynamic it's moving a lot and that's what creates the magnetic field of, of the uh, geomagnetic field or electromagnetic field too uh, you can see Venus doesn't say it has a, a molten core, but if it had a magnetic field, I would think it did. Here's the moon with its tiny core. Now they have a question mark here because they don't really know if that's melted or not. But I, if it is, I don't know. It, I mean, it's been four billion years. It could have cooled off. Moon's pretty small. Um, then over here on Mars, which is also a lot smaller, 
uh, well on its way to being totally dead. Its core is, is not molten anymore. It's lost its magnetic field and all protection from the sun. It's just amazing how perfect Earth worked out to be uh, for, for, for life to exist. So whatever hit the moon knocked it off by 40,000 miles as far as its orbit grows. Uh, goes. The orbit itself isn't even really circular, slightly elliptical, like 40,000 miles off. It rotates in a kind of a circular motion because it's like it doesn't, it's not totally staying in one track. It kind of oscillates. And then looking at it from the side, it also has a, a, a sideways wobble too. So it's wobbling just about every way that you can wobble your orbit. So it's not like it just circles right around at the same time. Otherwise, we'd see the moon in, in, this, in the same place every time it went around. This is why you don't see the moon in the same place every time it goes across the sky. It went up to the north, and then the south, and then the north. But whatever hit the moon, I think, is what caused this. And this is the wobble that it has as it goes around Earth. Keep in mind too that there's more mass on the other side of the moon which makes the far side heavier and the moon doesn't really spin around on its well I guess it goes around the Earth but it isn't really spinning on its own axis so I wonder if because of all the weight on the other side of the moon having some kind of centrifugal force and that is one of the strange things about the moon is that it always faces us. A whole bunch of things about that moon that don't make any sense, but I think that this major, super big impact did all of this. Now here's a lot nicer maps of the moon here. We have on the right hand side, the dark blue area is the impact point right here. Right there is about the center of it. But you can see from the left one, though, the highest point on the moon. And look at the amount of debris that is laying on that moon from that hit. That is just incredible. If this is 1,500 miles, then that mean, uh, then this is through this stuff like 2,000 miles or more. Look away over here. That's got to be at least 1,550 minimum if the crater is 1,550. Uh, yeah so anyway that's a lot of big a lot of debris and so we have all this weight piled up on the moon of course it was scooped up from the bottom and put over here but nevertheless we still have this high point and I'm thinking that because it's got this extra weight just the centrifugal you know uh, f force as it goes around Earth's gravitational field is somehow you know keeping the moon facing towards us and that's why it faces towards us. It's just got to be something something's out of whack there as far as its center of uh, gravity goes I guess. Here we have the extent of the uh, impact volcanic material in the middle which is what you would expect. It was a thin crust so it went right into uh, uh, molten rock. Uh, then up at the top here we have mixed ejected material so they would be naturally be getting a mixture of crust and mantle. Here it is showing the uh, uh, you know a few places there. We have the South Pole, far side, the massive amount of debris all in red that uh, came from this impact. Uh, this is a 10 to 1 vertical exaggerated map. It's a cross section. I think it was the 200 uh, degrees east meridian and uh, like I said it's, a, it's exaggerated but it looks pretty even if you just cut a cross section from right through the middle of it but not going through the direction of the impact in the other way. There's one last shot of the actual uh, moon. See the Aiken crater? That's the best way to find it is just to look for that little crater from the South Pole. It's the big dark area here. Another topo map. So that about does it for the biggest crater on the moon. Three to four billion years. Super huge. And as far as the anomaly goes, it's pretty obvious that it's either a metallic molten core liquid that welled up towards the impact site or the impactor itself somehow just didn't penetrate that far it got covered up with lava and that's what's in there so it's probably 
a super huge piece of nickel iron asteroid that could be a fragment of a core of another planetary body that somehow got destroyed. So I guess that does it for this video. Uh, thank you for stopping by. I hope that clarifies any misconceptions about what the anomaly might be and uh, also uh, how, how this whole crater got there in the first place. Okay, have a great day. Go safely. <laughs>